What happened is about a month ago, I received a phone call from a, from a person from Georgia and it was very hard to hear and where you are and anything, I'm renting a room. And this gentleman, um, he's engaged to a wonderful lady, Mary, right here. And so uh, let's, give, let's give her a round of applause, Mary from Othello. And it turns out that he visited Tri-Cities prior to coming here and he did not like our city. And we don't fully blame him because there's not too many things to do if you grew up in a big city and he decided to come and live here but he did not want to do that and the Lord placed on his heart that he needs to come and live here. He worked at a, as a driver for FedEx. He looked in Tri-Cities and they were not hiring in FedEx and there was no way he could get a job in FedEx because they were occupied. He had a place lined up where he's supposed to move in as he's driving from Georgia, the place he's supposed to move in, they don't answer. So he gives me a call. I was like, dude, come over. He comes over, checks out the room. I turns out I know Mary from Othello. And uh, he comes to the church next day. And the next morning, I want Brian to tell you what happened, how he prayed and how God answered his prayer. Um, yeah. Uh, basically what happened was uh, I was uh, talking to the Lord and asking him if it's his will for me to be here that uh, he would make the way, you know, open the doors, you know, and uh, I didn't see what was going to happen. So, I mean, I, all I did was just have faith and um, basically what happened was I, I went over to FedEx and he said, we're not hiring, but I'll take your number. And then the next day they gave me a call and uh, pretty much they told me to come on in. Um, before he gave me a call that morning, I woke up the next day and I said, Lord, you know, I really need a job. So if you can just let me know, if not, I'll just go back and, and he just opened the door for that. And how did that happen? What do you mean? I know the story. One guy got fired. One, one brother got fired. I'm sorry if that is anybody here over there got fired. It's because of his prayers. <laughs> but he, he got probably the brother was sinning. And so but yeah, one brother got fired and he got called the next day and they said, Hey, we did not have a job when you came here. But now we do have a job. Do you still want to work here? So he's like, yes. And he came in and they gave him the job. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Let's give it up for Brian. Amen. Pa Patrick, you can come here for a second. Patrick is the man. Just uh, Patrick, uh, how many weeks ago you came here for? Second week. Yeah, Patrick came here just literally for recently and he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. And Patrick, how long, how long has it been since you've been uh, in the States? Like about two years and a half. Two, two years and a half. And you came here as a student on a student visa, which simply meant that if it costs you $100 to go to CBC and take one class, it costs you double of that. Triple. Yeah, and he's not a son of a millionaire or billionaire yet. His heavenly father is pretty wealthy, but the earthly father is a different story. And so he came and it was very challenging because he couldn't go through school um, without, how many quarters you went to school with? I went for like one year. So you had you found money to pay for one year. Yeah. Yeah. And then you stopped going to school because of no money. And you couldn't work because you did not have what? Like uh employ employment authorization and so basically like I came here as a student, so I'm supposed to go to school. Like I can't I can't work off campus. But unfortunately like some situations happened back home where I came from and i faced a lot of uh, financially problems and it was i was just going through a hard time like emotionally mentally it was just difficult i couldn't even go to school no more and uh, i applied for to change my status so i can be able to get a job and go to school and it, it was supposedly i was supposed to take like three months for everything to finish but literally, it took like seven months. Every time I keep calling them and they, they'll say like, uh, it's still pending, just wait, just keep waiting. A, a lot of time I lost hope. Sometimes I even got mad at God. It's like, and when you gave your life to Jesus, and I know you met with Ilya and Ilya prayed for you. How long did it happen after that prayer that you got something in the mail? About the next week. Next week. Yeah, 
literally literally like i met with eli and we were talking and he prayed for me and he gave me a lot of encouragement and it meant a lot like i, I felt different and, and after that i went home for like a week a week after that and i just received in the mail like uh, a letter of confirmation and my employment authorization so basically everything is done i was just it was so amazing like i didn't know what to do and i, I couldn't I, <laughs> I couldn't hold myself come on let's put our hands together for jesus christ did you didn't you didn't you call Ilya that night yeah it was late because i i came like i came to it was on wednesday uh after prayer here i went with my friend like a soccer practice and then i i came home late like at around midnight and then i found the mail I just couldn't hold it. I was like, I, I was like, I want to call Eli, but it was late. But something just told me, like, just call him. Maybe he's not sleeping. And I did. I called him and I apologized. I was like, man, I'm sorry for calling you late, but you won't believe it. You know. <laughs> Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Woo! So imagine, supposed to get take three months, and it, it took about seven months, and he just lost hope. Came and he gives his life to Jesus Christ just literally a few weeks ago. And then Ilya meets with him, encourages his faith. And then a week later, he gets it in the mail. Just stand here for a second. He gets that thing in the mail. So now he's able to get a job and he's able to actually go to school for the same amount of money that you and I would pay to go to school. Come on, somebody. Let's give our hands to Jesus Christ. I wanted to tell you some testimonies. Um, they're kind of old, some of them. Uh, one of them you've already heard before, and it's mine. It's how I realized that God was real. Um, when I first moved up here from Colorado, I was facing a custody battle for my son. And I didn't have a job, I didn't really have my own place to be at. And um, I, I started to see how my situation just, it wasn't right. And I felt very hopeless in what was happening. And one day I was all alone, and this was before I was a Christian, um, I went into the bathroom and I closed the door and I started praying to a God I didn't really believe in at the time. And I told him, if this is your will for me to give up my side of the custody battle, then you have to give my son an angel because I cannot handle knowing that my son would be without me and that he wouldn't be protected. So um, a week later, I called up his father and I told him I was going to drop my side of the case and his grandma came and picked him up and I signed the papers to drop my side and a few weeks later I finally came to this church and I was invited to a cell group now home groups and the girls started praying and they were all encouraging each other and one of them told me and without anybody knowing about what I prayed about, they told me that God answered my prayers and that my son got an angel. And that, that really was the moment that it sparked to me that God was real and alive and he could hear me. Amen. And um, another testimony I wanted to share with you was about my friend Robbie. And I've known him for about 10 years, and he just spent the last eight years in prison. Um, he was diagnosed with stomach cancer, and after I had become saved, I tried to tell him about God and everything, but he would kind of throw it back in my face, you know, I just had to endure it. But um, he was recently released to a halfway house in Colorado, and because of my persistence and because of a roommate that he was blessed with, um, he made him go to church. And it was on a Wednesday two weeks ago, and he messaged me after church, and he told me that he gave his life to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. The next day, he went to see the doctor, and his doctor had been, you know, working for 43 years, and he told him that his cancer was receding, and he had never seen that happen before. Wow. When Robbie told me, I smiled and said, that's because of God. There's no other way. Um, and I want you all to know that it's so important that we express what we've learned about God to other people. 